Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital, and today I'm doing a video about Falcon. In this particular video, I'm going to go over the use case for Falcon. Why would you want to buy this particular synthesizer over others? Now, one of the obvious reasons is its immense power and flexibility. But it's important to understand exactly what kind of a synthesizer Falcon is. And to help explain it, I'm going to kind of show you where it lies in between um, other products out there. Now, Falcon is kind of like a, a platform for development. It's almost like a development platform, but it's not um, as much of a programming kind of sandbox as uh, something like Reactor. So let's think about Reactor from Native Instruments. Reactor is a synthesizer that uh, is basically a programming platform specifically made to create synthesizers. So you can have something like this thing and uh, this, it acts like a synthesizer. You can go through different presets and so forth. But it's actually a um it's actually programmed in here and then you can use this interface to access what you've done so you can have this synthesizer i can come in here and load up this one and it does something entirely different has a different interface has different rules all that so you can pretty much make whatever synthesizer you want in here now the thought process you have to go through to make something like that happen is quite different from the thought process you need to to make something um, in like a synthesizer like Avenger where you're just coming in and you're getting a sound and you're moving the filters. This is closer to what you would think and what you'd be doing if you had a synthesizer or a traditional or analog synthesizer right in front of you and you were twisting knobs and adjusting parameters or even patching patch cables. <clears throat> but with Reactor, if you were starting from just a blank Reactor page, you have to think about engineering. You're in an engineering mindset. You're not in necessarily a musically creative mindset. And so pretty much probably no one is going to start making a song by using a blank uh, reactor page. You're probably going to, you know, this stuff gets super complicated. This is definitely just basically visual programming. Uh, and so we have something that you can just do anything, but it's not very musical at all like Reactor, which is basically a platform for creating synthesizers and effects. And then we have something like this, which is a platform for creating sounds and being musically creative, but not nearly as flexible as something like a Reactor. And in between the two, we have Falcon that allows very deep flexibility, but doesn't go all the way to the level of programming, although you can do some programming in it. But... Um, largely, we have modules that are already programmed and ready to go, and we can combine them in basically any way we want to get the results that we we're looking for. So, all that said, if that makes sense to you, hopefully, what is the use case for this? Why would I buy this synthesizer? Well, let me tell you why you don't want to buy this. You don't want to buy this for the huge factory library, mostly because the factory library isn't particularly huge um it's it's nice and it has some decent variety listen to that isn't that beautiful so it has some really cool sounds some complicated sounds some deep sounds And uh, there's a lot to appreciate, but it's not um, the end-all, be-all. As far as like you can't um, cover all your bases here, or at least I, I, I don't think so. 
Um, also, when we're dealing with trying to find the sounds you want, there's these sort of folder categories, but there's not like um, um, tags where you can kind of look for a bass that is analog or whatever, right? You just have to kind of go here and look through and try these out. So this is behind a lot of other synthesizers um, as far as being able to curate and find the sounds you want. There is a search feature that's been added since I think like version 4, 1.4 or something. Um, but of course, then you're just doing a search on the names and it's not still any sort of a tagging system, which is unfortunate. And it mixes in wave files and sound files and a bunch of different things together. There's probably ways to go in and filter that, but uh, honestly, I haven't really even tried to because uh, it's, yeah, this, there's just a lot of content here. And it's not really good at finding what you need when you need it. So it's not so much for kind of having your whole library, kind of like something like complete uh complete control allows you to go across a like thousands and thousands of sounds and do tag search and get the exact sound you want so I, I wouldn't recommend it for that there's a lot of um sounds that uvi makes though and you can use any of those sounds within falcon so you can consolidate your UVI library with Falcon. And that might be a reason you'd want to do it. They make a lot of different packs. Some of these only work in Falcon and the rest of them will work either in Falcon or in the free uh, UVI workstation. So if you just have a uh, an extensive UVI library or... Uh, if you want to have one, you don't really need to buy Falcon. You can just use UVI Workstation. And as long as there isn't some here that you really desperately want that are Falcon only, eh, it's probably not a good reason to get Falcon. It's, it's also not the best if you just want to come in and make sounds and tweak sounds quickly. Uh, something like Avenger here, it's really easy to go in and start messing with things and turn on the filter and make an envelope that's going to modulate this FM. And it's really fast to iterate. Whether it's, it sounds good or not, it's, it's, it's really fast. And you can easily throw in other LFOs and stuff like that. So it's really easy and fast. And if you want to just make a sound to add to what your um, your composition, this would be a much better solution. Coming in a Falcon, especially if I'm starting from a new program, it doesn't make any sound initially, and I have to to do everything manually. So it's not as not nearly as horrible as trying to start with a an empty falcon I mean an empty reactor patch, but it is slower and more tedious to try to come in and build something up from scratch in a Falcon. So what is it really good for then? So what I'm gonna say is that if you have a concept of a sound already kind of worked out in your head, you know you want it to kind of have some sort of a sweep in it and you, you want it to have a noise burst at the beginning or whatever, You're, you've, you've got an idea in your head and you want to design it and you don't want to hit any walls as far as like, oh, I can't do that because I've ran out of LFOs or I hit a wall because I can't, uh, I don't have a physical modeling module or whatever, then it's really good for that. And I think that's where it's... Um, the best if you have an idea already about what you want to do you want to create a sound and you don't want to get stopped along the way but you you already know that you want an fm sound and you want it to transition into this or that it's a good kind of 
workspace for coming in and designing a specific sound. But if you don't know exactly what you want, you want to experiment and um, kind of quickly go through a bunch of iterations, this is not your guy. But to recap it, Falcon sits nicely between synths like this and and reactor which is pretty much the only thing like reactor is the, is the, reactor's the only thing like itself uh but it sits nicely between these two where i've never really tried to program something in reactor because this is too crazy difficult but i have um made sounds within falcon <clears throat> Now, if you want to try to get the best of both worlds, if you want to be able to kind of create something in a playground or in a sandbox where you can almost do whatever you want, and or let's say you have Falcon and you're like, yeah, it is a little slow to, to build something. What I'd recommend is that you have a preset that involves all of the... Uh, all of the you can kind of build a synthesizer and let me demonstrate that like if I load up the default here this is my default preset for Falcon and what it is is it's um, a bunch of effects and a bunch of oscillators and so forth and, and modulators all together in one synth. So it's kind of like a super synthesizer already set up. And so it's a little bit, so when I load that, it's automatically going to play some sounds. And then I can go in and modify the sounds. So right away I can start playing. But one of the things that makes Falcon a little bit difficult to deal with is that none of the automation immediately works uh, because there's a layer between all the knobs and controls in Falcon and the actual host automation. Um, but if, if I do modulate this, um, I can come in and just assign it quickly to one of the host modulations here. And then it shows up in my DAW as the wave index, and and then I can go ahead and start modulating it. So it takes a little bit longer, but you can start doing that and automate things. But anyway, I've made this so that it instantly works, and then if I want to do something um, specific, like if I want to just, I don't want to do, I don't want to use wavetable, I want to use, um, like a granular synthesizer. So then I can just go into my sample layer here or my sample key group and activate this granular sampler here. And then I can just drag in whatever sample I want and start getting up and working quickly. So doing something like that where you can kind of put together all the things that you want um, you can already like this filter here is already assigned to a filter envelope so that I can instantly get in here and and control the filter cutoff with this envelope. And that saves me a lot of time. So it's almost that I can come in here and actually use this like a quick iterating synth. But the difference here is, is that it's still a bit clunky to navigate and figure out where I am and so forth. And this setup is a bit complicated. So it, it, it could be simpler. I could just do a few different um, oscillators and a few different... Uh, effects and stuff and it would be maybe a little bit less crazy crazy but um you know this is what i've done but you can do something similar and make it a little bit closer to the bridge between something like avenger and something you know you can push closer to avenger by doing that 
so that's basically all I have to say about Falcon for now. Um, hopefully this is helpful to you if you're considering getting it, or even if you have it, you can use these, uh, the technique that I just showed you to use it more effectively, especially if it's one of your, your main sense in your arsenal. Um, it, when you, use this technique i think you might find that you'll use it more if you've not used it as much as you thought you were when you bought it which is my case i haven't used it as much and i really my go-to right now is avenger i, I tend to use it because it's still easier it's still significantly easier to to get something going in avenger than it is for falcon um, but if you don't have a nice, big, uh, easy to use powerhouse um, like Avenger, you can use this technique in Falcon and, and get some work done. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. Uh, have a wonderful time with your music and have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye.